Hello, and welcome to the Feeling Good Podcast, where you can learn powerful techniques to change the way you feel. I am your host, Dr. Rhonda Borowski, and joining me here in the Murrieta studio is Dr. David Burns. Dr. Burns is a pioneer in the development of cognitive behavioral therapy and the creator of the new Teen Therapy. He is the author of Feeling Good, which has sold over 5 million copies in the United States and has been translated into over 30 languages. His latest book, Feeling Great, contains powerful new techniques that make rapid recovery possible for many people struggling with depression and anxiety. Dr. Burns is currently an emeritus adjunct professor of clinical psychiatry at Stanford University School of Medicine. David and I are happy to announce that there will be the first ever Team CBT World Congress August 18 through the 21st to be held in Warsaw, Poland. Licensed therapists, Lay people and therapists in training are welcome to attend the Congress in person in Warsaw or join us online at a reduced registration fee. During these four days, an international team faculty, many of whom have been featured on this podcast, will present the entire team model from start to finish, from testing to methods. The Congress will feature interactive sessions in which participants can learn and practice all elements of the powerful team system while receiving expert coaching on team techniques. There will also be special topic workshops that will address trauma, cancer care, and low-intensity team CBT. All information about the Congress is available at www.teamcbt.com. Dot EU. That is www.teamcbt.eu. We look forward to seeing you there. Well, uh, welcome back. Uh, thank you for returning. Uh, and we're about to dive into the second and uh, half, the final conclusion of our therapy session with, with Nosley. Yes, and this is, uh, just to remind people, this is episode 302. Oh, and are we supposed to read any endorsements or anything? Um, well, these are kind of long. I can read one. I'll read one really quick one. Okay, sure. About episode 297, which is the homework we did with Alexis on homework. And Jay wrote us in, hello, Dr. Burns, a quick question about your latest podcast published on June 20th, which was this episode 297. Do you have any Do you have copies of any of the daily mood logs that your colleague did when she was recovering from her relationship? Mm, Maybe this wasn't 297. I asked because it would be fantastic to include the show notes as a link for all those recording, for all of those with relationship challenges. This was a great podcast and 11 out of 10. Well, yeah, we'll find out what well, podcast yeah. that was. I emailed him today, and then we might uh, let you podcast viewers know it uh, in a future podcast once we find out what podcast he's referring to, yeah. because that is such an important thing when, <laughs> when, when you break up with a relationship, how, how you recover fr- from that. So that will be a, a great topic for another day. But now back to Nosley, and what do we do when, when we're insecure? And in part one, we empathized, and that's why I love working working with Rhonda, why I like love working with, with Jill because of the, the, the beautiful natural uh, empathy and compassion that, that uh, you have. I always learn f- from, from both of you. And then uh, we, we assess her resistance to change, which is the critical part of team. And then we, we use a variety of techniques. Then um, we'll, we want, to, want her to hit the ball out of the park. We're not looking for partial improvement in team, although all improvement is good. But what we're really looking for is a kind of enlightenment, a kind of a totally blowing your negative thoughts out of the water and not only becoming less depressed, but beginning to feel joy or transcendence or what many of the great teachers historically have called enlightenment or other similar words. So let, let's see what happens. Nice. What we'll do now then is move, you know, from kind of empathy to assessment of resistance. And usually we start that, as I mentioned in the slides, with the invitation step. So I'm going to ask you that, Nasli, 
um, you know, you've shared with us a lot so far and um, about these kind of feelings of inadequacy and anxiety that feel like they're really kind of taking the joy out of your clinical work. Um, lots of self-doubt. And now I'm wondering, would, would now be a good time to kind of shift gears and start to work on these thoughts and feelings that you're having? Or do you feel like you need more time with us to talk and get support and get empathy? No, I'm definitely ready to work on them because I really would like to overcome it. them. I know that they're not, uh, they're very subjective. Yeah. They're not 100% real, but I just cannot help myself having them. Okay, perfect. So yeah, so I kind of offered you the invitation and you're saying, yes, I'm ready to get to work. And that sounds great. Sounds good to me too. Um, and so I'll, I'll, David, it makes sense to you. I mean, we, we kind of have the specific kind of moment in time or moments in time that hang together, these moments where you feel like you're not doing great in a session with a patient or a patient's angry with you. Um, so David, can I, should I move on and start with the magic button? Yeah, you're doing great. Yeah, absolutely. Or in the miracle cure question too. Sure. sure. Let, yeah. Well, let's start with the miracle cure question then. Right. Um, so Nasli, if a miracle happened today and you got just what you wanted out of our work with you, what would change? How would things be different for you? Yeah. Yeah. If a miracle happens today, what, we can't promise a miracle, but what miracle would you be hoping for? Um, I guess uh, I would learn, I would like to learn to, I have this cognitive style of doing like discarding the positive and um, always focusing on negative about myself. So I would like to change that. And also I would like, to decrease my anxiety i know that the anxiety won't go away 100 uh, percent and of course like some feelings of inadequacy and incompetency is normal and is even maybe uh, necessary but at least at a level that it will not demotivate me from doing my job and suppose that we had then a magic button and right now, and if you pressed it, instantly uh, all these feelings of inadequacy and incompetency would disappear and all this focusing on the negatives would disappear and you'd feel great joy and great conf confidence in your clinical work. Would you press that magic button? Yes, both with both hands. <laughs> okay, great. And Jill will now uh, take over again. Um, okay, but you're welcome to, I'm sure you will jump in here, David, but um, yeah, so, so great. I mean, we, you said with both hands, so you're feeling very eager and enthusiastic to feel better today. Um, and I'm feeling eager and enthusiastic to help you. Um, and for sure, obviously, we have lots and lots of tools that I think will be really helpful to you today. Um, and at the same time, you even alluded to this, there are some things that your negative thoughts and feelings really show about you, the kind of person that you are, the kind of therapist that you are, that are really beautiful, um, just really an expression of your values. And I'm guessing there's some ways in which your anxiety might be helping you, might be kind of advantageous. And so would it be okay with you to spend a few minutes kind of looking at some of the benefits and the advantages before kind of forging ahead and trying to help you with these thoughts and feelings? Yeah, I would like, I would like to. Okay. <laughs> So what we're going to do then to, to help us just to kind of organize that, you can always just do it on a piece of paper, but let's look at page six in the handout packet, okay. everyone. Um, and we'll kind of be flipping back and forth between your daily mood log that has your thoughts and feelings. And then page six, that's where we're going to write down. We're going to kind of track the advantages and core values of your thoughts and feelings. Um, so I guess if we uh, maybe take anxiety, that's the one that you shared with maybe kind of the strongest, um, we can write down anxiety on the left side in this chart. And then I would ask you, uh, what do you think are some benefits of your anxiety? Or what does your anxiety show about you that's really beautiful and awesome? that I care a lot about my job. Mm -hmm. Write that down and in the right-hand column uh, on that 
positive okay. reframing table. Mm -hmm. Anxiety is in the left column, the thought or feeling, and then the right hand column. But I care a lot uh, about about my my my, pa my patients. Is that what you said? My job, yeah, my patients, my patient, and my job. Um, I want to do my job competently. Is that a second one, or is that the one we just put down already? That's the second one. Okay, okay. I, I want to do my job, uh, to do to do my job well, competently. Well, yeah. Um, now, before we jump ahead too fast here, the first one we wrote a lot. I care a lot about my job and my patients. Is is that true? Yes. Is that important? Definitely. Is that powerful? It is. Okay, great. And how about the second one? I, I, I want to do my best for, for my patients, and I have, I have high, high standards. Can we add to high standards? Uh, oh, definitely. Right. <laughs> now, b b before we go ahead, is, is that true? That's true, but I don't know if it's uh, having high standards, if it's an advantage. <laughs> Everything is a two-edged sword. Everything yeah. has positives and negatives. So we're just looking at the positive side. But what, uh -huh. what, what, what are some of the positive aspects of having high standards and wanting to do my best? How, how might that help you? I think that comes from a, the past. Then I will not, I will be validated I will not be judged in a bad way. Oh, okay, so that's one of your motivations is is to uh, to do a good job so people will be proud of you and 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 be pleased with you. Yes, but that I uh, um, but then like I realized that at my therapy, you know, because that comes from a very strict education system that I was raised from first grade on to college um but I have high standards so I can be good at my job mm -hmm. and so I don't make any mistakes and I don't harm any patients mm -hmm. is that important that is important would you add that to your list yeah sure yeah it, it, it it's uh, reduce mistakes mm -hmm. And uh, and and not not hurt 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 patients. And right, so you see, what we're saying is um, that your anxiety, what your anxiety shows about you, we said, is that you have high standards. You take your job seriously. You take your work seriously, mm -hmm. right? And and that, uh, in some ways, is protective, right? Having high standards and working really hard to do good by your patients reduces you making mistakes and you know, not hurting patients, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is that important? That is important, yeah. Yeah. Now, did you, your high standards, you're, you're aspiring always to improve. Is that true? I'm sorry, high stand. You have high standards for yourself. Yes. And you want to learn and grow and improve in your psychotherapy techniques. That's right, yeah. Uh, is that a good thing? It seems a good thing, but maybe it's not. <laughs> well, we can. These things are two two edged swords. You want to look at the down, at the dark side or the or the positive side. Okay, from the positive side, yeah, it's it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Did it bring you here today? Your high standards. Yes. Is that a good thing? That's a good thing. Yeah. Did that take courage? It took courage. Okay. Can you can you add that? Okay. <laughs> and I, and by the way, Nazi, I mean, I love that you're already seeing, of course, the downside of these things, right? That's, that's why you're here. And I know you're eager to change them and you're like, but it's not that good. But, you know, kind of before we do that, which we totally agree with and we can see the negatives too, it's like we also just want to kind of honor and respect that there are some really beautiful things, right? I mean, you're this kind of like diligent, hardworking, concerned, conscientious therapist, right? And that's kind of awesome. 
awesome. I mean, if I were referring a family member, would I rather have a concerned, diligent, conscientious therapist or, you know, one who really didn't give a crap about how they did by their patients, right? And I think that's kind of what we're trying to highlight here. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Totally. And is that, is that accurate that you're, that you are, you know, conscientious and and diligent and hardworking? Right. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. David, should we talk about a different feeling? Yes. uh You you sometimes feel uh, bad and ashamed, uh, right? Yeah. Uh, Can you put that in the left-hand column, the thought or feeling, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. Uh, ashamed and and, and bad. Can you see any positives in ashamed and bad? And and there's actually three questions you can ask yourself. Why might this feeling be uh, appropriate at times? Secondly, what does it show about me and my core values as a human being that's positive, maybe Mm -hmm. awesome, maybe beautiful? And then the third question is, how might this feeling be be helpful to, to, to me? Mm-hmm. So it's painful to be feeling bad and ashamed, but it, it, what are the, some of the positives that are hidden inside of uh, your shame? I guess, first of all, uh, that makes me a, maybe a good hearted person. A good what? Hearted person, a good, a person good with hearted. good intentions. Good-hearted, David. Oh, like, good-hearted. Good oh, hearted. yes. Yes, put that down. Uh, g- good-hearted. I love that. Is that true of you? I think so. That, uh-huh. that's, that one of the, that's one of the feedbacks I've been getting sure. since my childhood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and is, is that uh, important? Um, to be good-hearted? I so. I do it without realizing, but I think it's, <laughs> it's a good Sure. Is, is it powerful? It is powerful. Yeah. So put that down, being good-hearted. What else does the uh, the shame and badness show about you that's positive and beautiful and awesome? What are some other great things about feeling bad and ashamed? Maybe it has a protective side. Absolutely, put that down. It's it's protective. And and tell us about the protection. Um. You feel ashamed, bad. Maybe sometimes you wanna you have you wanna do harm or you wanna violate the laws. Yeah. Um, right. Like sometimes, but you don't do that because not only because you're gonna go to jail, but also you would feel ashamed. You you wouldn't. I don't know. Like you wouldn't. Um, sure. Wanna judge in that way you know right um, so that protects me i mean mm-hmm. who doesn't want to who does not want a million dollar sure right? sure <laughs> so so if it protects right. you would it be a form of self-love yeah would you add that to your mm-hmm. list on the right self-love and another question i would have i'll, I'll shut up here jill but uh the the feeling bad and ashamed does that uh, make you accountable? Yes. Mm-hmm. Rather than blaming everybody else. No, but see, uh, that's the positive side, definitely. But as you see, my problem is the level is too much with me. Mm-hmm. That, well, we'll, we'll we'll get that to that in a minute. Yeah. But you're but right. At a lower you're... level. Right. No, you're you're absolutely right. Um, that I mean, uh, uh, David's absolutely right that these feelings of shame and badness keep you accountable. Right. You're you're not yeah. blaming others. You're never blaming your patients or the system or anything. You're taking all the responsibility on yourself. Yeah. And and I hear you saying, of course, I'd like to dial that down, and we'll get to that. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Totally. So I put we just a, have a very we just have a very motivated patient in front of us, David. So yeah, that's, that's, that's great. What's going on, right? <laughs> sure. That that that's that's fantastic. Would you say, um, uh, Nasli, that 
feeling bad and ashamed when, when, especially when you screw up or like with the patient who was angry with, with you, w would you say that that shows uh, some humility on your part? Definitely. Yes. Uh, would you add that on the right? Hu humility. Mm -hmm. and, and is, is humility a, a good quality? Honestly. To a certain point. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. this is, these are all to a point, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So it's you can add a line, but that line should not be crossed over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, whenever you put something on the right, just shout out to a point. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, you, you feel, um, Let's choose another emotion here. Uh, you feel in, inadequate and incompetent uh, and uh, sometimes an inferior and, and worthless. Uh, uh, so so let, let's see if there's anything good about that, that feeling and in, 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 inadequate. That, that's what you're feeling all the time when you're with yeah. patients, whether they're doing well or whether the patients are mad at you. Either way, you're feeling inadequate. Mm. Um, so the positive side of feeling inadequate is that, well, we all have to feel a little bit inadequate so that it's a point for motivation. Oh, so put that in the right hand column. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it's motivating to, to, to feel inadequate. I love that. Would would you say that uh, that your feelings of inadequacy have have to do with being honest with yourself? That's right. Is that important? Um. Yeah. Okay. Put that down. Uh, honest uh, with with myself. Um. Uh, uh, would it be true that there's uh, all kinds of room for improvement in 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 your ther therapy work yes and and so the uh, inadequacy sh shows that you're open to and and hungry for improvement is that true that's true is that's that good true. is that a good thing that's a very good thing like but, but, i have a friend and because of her personality traits she feels super confident and super competent she never takes supervision. She never takes training. Yeah. She believes she's very good. But I think, you know, that's mm -hmm. not a good thing. And if she used my brief mood survey, she'd discover she's not nearly as good as what she thought. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> right. She no, I think it's very powerful what you're saying, Nazli, is, is recognizing that these kind of painful feelings that you have at the same time show that you're open and honest and eager to improve that you um are you know introspective or reflective taking responsibility kind of all of these qualities right and you're saying versus kind of being in denial and thinking i rock as a therapist there's nothing i can do any better right yeah yeah I have another uh, question. Do, do these uh, feeling of inadequacy, does, does that show your uh, vulnerability and human side? Oh, definitely, yeah. Is that good to be vulnerable and human? <laughs> it is a good quality to a certain point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, shout out to a certain point. You didn't say it loudly enough. <laughs> we, we can do it together on the count of three. We'll say to a certain point. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> One, two, three. To a That's certain point. point. <laughs> okay. So add, uh, you know, add vulnerable and human and, uh, to, to your list. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to a certain point. <laughs> we'll have to add that to our exercise. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to our positive reframing exercise. Uh, you know, I'm creating an app. Uh, Nowsley, and we we can even have the the, the app scream out <laughs> when people come up with positive, yeah. and the app can shout out to a certain point only. <laughs> but I do just I'll just make a quick teaching point here. So if people are confused, I think a lot of people probably know why we're saying that and what that means. But 
essentially we're doing this exercise to really identify with resistance, right? To think of what are all the good reasons not to change? What do all these things show about Nosley that's beautiful and awesome and, and why she might want to hang on to them? And again, we're doing that because we want to sort of beat her resistance to the punch, right? We want to bring it up. We want to honor all the good reasons not to change because they're true, right? But at the same time, because Nosley is feeling quite motivated when we're highlighting the positive she's already jumped into the night she's like "Mm, but it's not really serving me that well and that's I mean we're sort of laughing about it but that's great I mean that that's not a problem we just want to make sure she sort of honors her resistance she really like feels proud of her symptoms because she should feel proud of her symptoms they are really beautiful but we're totally cool with the fact that Nazli is also saying but wait a minute they're not all good because obviously that's why she's here right that's why we're going to move forward and use other methods so it, it we're sort of joking and having fun with it but it is it's a valuable thing actually to see it sort of unfold now another teaching point that we won't speak too much today and in fact we never do because we don't know how but that we're we're laughing a lot and and that that's a personal style that you may or may not have but i think that laughter can work in two ways in therapy one it can bring you closer to the patient it's a form of uh, tenderness and uh, kind of warmth and but but also uh, laughter can can go a long way to helping to melt away some of the intensity of these uh, of, uh, of these self criticisms. You have a lot of other negative feelings. Let, let's just touch on a, on a, on a couple of them. Uh, you know the the hopelessness and discouragement and you know feeling of despair and pessimism gets up to a hundred. With you, Nosley, that that's one of the hugely powerful uh, emotions. Uh, can can you think of any uh, uh, good good things about about your 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 hopelessness? I can think of a lot of things that it shows about you that's pretty awesome and a lot of real benefits uh, of it. Can you can you think of any uh, good things about your hopelessness, uh, Nosley? To a point. <laughs> <laughs> Um, hopelessness. Um, just thinking, can it be a motivating effect, maybe? Okay, maybe put it down. Put down what it can be motivating. What how is it motivating for you? Um I feel hopeless, so um Yeah. I feel hopeless, so I should take um, some help. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because uh, sure. uh, uh, motivating, and, and so I reach reach out as you're doing right, right at this moment, which I really ha- happy is ha- happening. Let me ask you another thing about your hopelessness. Isn't it true that you've had this problem since you've been a little girl? That's right. And isn't it true that you still have this problem? Right. Since first grade. uh, Huh? Since first grade. Yeah, yeah, since first grade. And so wouldn't the hopelessness show that you're realistic and honest, uh, you know, a critical thinker? Yeah. How likely is that you're going to be cured here in two hours from something that's been going on since uh, first grade? Mm-hmm. Do you, Do you see that? Yes, uh-huh. definitely. And 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 another thing about about your hopelessness. This is one of the two hardest ones for me to figure out anything positive. And I can remember the girl. Huh. Cautious, yeah. Cautious, yeah. Put that down. Uh, uh, there, there you go. Yeah. And explain, uh, explain that to us. What makes you say cautious? Um, so that it's not going to happen. So not do not take risks. Y- yeah. Uh huh. Right. Do not even try. Yeah. Yeah. Not right. Yeah. 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 Uh huh. Get there. It's in the comfort zone. 
Yeah, yeah that's yeah. what I was thinking, that your hopelessness protects you because, like, for example, in the past when you were a therapist and you became hopeless, you gave it up and you did admin work and that protects you from failing or from, um, you know, hurting patients or from even yeah. from your own anxiety. If you just kind of give up on the hard stuff, if you feel hopeless, then you don't have to feel all these awful feelings or risk hurting patients. So I feel like your hopelessness is very, when you said cautious, I feel like it's very protective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Protective. Yeah. That's what I was thinking this morning with my hand, Nosley. You know, I have to do this. Yeah. And in the morning, it's excruciatingly painful because mm. uh, my hand's in a in a kind of a cast thing all, all night to keep my fingers straight. Oh, sorry and, for and, your and, so, and so I'm thinking, oh, maybe I should just give up and I don't have to do this with my hand right now. I'll just not worry about it anymore because mm -hmm. you, you, it's painful to, you know, to, to keep to keep at it. Yeah, I totally see the connection. Yeah. I'll tell you another thing. Does your hopelessness protect you from disappointment? Yes. Is that important? That is important. Could add that too. And maybe it also protects me from failing. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. I, that, I love that. Uh huh. Protects from, from failure. I, yeah, that's great. Um. And Jill, I don't know if we do it anymore. If we're going to do one more, it might be anger. Okay, if you want, I was going to suggest we keep we move on. But if you feel yeah, like we can move you know. on. If yeah, do you, are you ready to move on from uh, and get to, to our magic dial, or do you want to do anger? Nosley. Oh, you were asking me. Sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, doesn't matter. Well, we can. Well, it's we just can, can you think of one good thing about your anger? Um, it means I give actually value to myself. Put that down. Mm. That's right. I love that. And explain to us how, how, how that works. So that I am worth of... Um, I get angry because I am valuable because there is um, inequality in the world. Mm -hmm. And and why as a human being, I am on the disadvantaged side. Yeah. Like if, right. if, like if I was not getting angry, that would be like passive acceptance. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Uh-huh. That that's right. And should we add it uh, shows I'll st stick up for myself? Sure. Add, add that. Well, uh shows I I I I I I stick up for myself. And also the anger can can give you some energy to make some changes. That's right. Yeah, it has the motivating side. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, now let's let let's uh, let's go to to the magic dial and and um, I'll I'll see if I can fly through this really really quickly. Um, can I, David? Yep. Can I mm, ask her sure. first before you do the magic dial? So we'll have you do the magic dial. But first, I just want to ask you the pivot question, Nazi. I want to say, kind of given all of these benefits, there's so many significant benefits to your anxiety, your shame, your inadequacy, and they show so many truly beautiful and valuable things about you and who you are and what's important to you. So kind of given all the benefits and all the positive values, why would you want to change? Why would we want to work with you on this that shows such beauty? Yeah, because you wrote down 20, I wrote down 21 beautiful things about you here. And so if you hit the magic button, these will all go down the toilet along with all your negative feelings. Well, <laughs> as I said a hundred million times, they are good at a moderate level. Okay, so <laughs> so let's but, say what would be a good but level. What were you say, but but what? I just want to hear your but. Okay, but um, I have them at an extreme level that they started to give me discomfort and prevent me to live my to live the life 
I want to live. Absolutely. Yeah. I like to hear, that's why I asked the pivot question. I like to hear my patient actually arguing for change. And so to me, <laughs> hearing Nasli say, yes, they, they work for me, they're beneficial, but they're really hurting me, right? They're really getting in my way. I'm about to quit my second job, right? Because they feel so awful. And then that sort of, then I, then that gives us ammunition to move to the magic dial where it's like, you know, okay, instead of having them all or not at all, right? Could we dial down each one to the level that kind of is going to work for you, is going to be beneficial, but not sort of soul crushing, right? Right. Okay, so I'll leave it to you, David. Okay, so um, now go to your goal column on page four, everybody, mm -hmm. including Nasley. And you, the first column is sad and unhappy that you sometimes feel 60 to 70%, like after in with that cancer patient was angry with you and you were crying and feeling pretty sad. What would be a healthy amount of sadness to, to feel if we could dial it down to some lower level? Um, 70, well, maybe like 30. 30, okay, put 30 in the goal column. Okay. And... um. And then the anxiety, you sometimes feel at 80%. What would be a, a good level of anxiety? I think 20 to 30%. Okay, put 20 to 30 20, in your... 20, 20, 20. 20, yeah, 20 is plenty of anxiety. You can put that in the goal column. And then how bad and ashamed do you want to feel? That's sometimes 100. What, what's a good shame level if you could dial it to any level? 10. 10, yeah, that's a good good level of shame. And then the inferior, worthless, inadequate, incompetent, uh, all of that was 100. What, what's an ideal level of inadequacy? 10. 10, beautiful. And then how uh, embarrassed, humiliated, and self-conscious do you want to feel? That was 60 to 70. What would be the uh, ideal level? 10. 10, great. And that goes in the goal column. All you people are watching, you should be recording these things in the goal column on your handout. And then how hopeless, discouraged, pessimistic, and despairing would you like to feel? Um, five. <laughs> five, great. Okay. And then um, the last one, because we you said to eliminate frustration. So anger, resentful, and upset, that's 40 to 50. How angry would you like to be? Again, like five to 10. Five, five to 10, great. And now we've finished the assessment of re resistance. And um, what, what this seems to do for, for people, it's kind of a paradox, but when you, uh, you, you see in our society and you know, around the whole world, it's taught that these negative feelings are due to what's wrong with you. Like you have some mental disorder, like generalized anxiety disorder. That, that's like a brain disorder of some kind or a chemical imbalance or a genetic uh, thing or a personality defect. And, and that causes a lot of shame over these symptoms. And what we're trying to do is make you proud of your symptoms. And we're trying to talk you out of ch changing. And because the paradox is once the patient becomes proud of these symptoms, paradoxically, it opens the door to the possibility of rapid change, and in some cases, ultra, ultra rapid change. And it's the opposite of what I was trained in as a psychiatric resident, what most therapists were trained in, that these are problems the person has, and we're supposed to fix this person who's, who's broken, and we're coming at it from the entire uh, opposite uh, direction today. And so we're about to dive into the M equals methods, and we use over 100 methods to, to crush these kinds of distorted negative uh, thoughts, and we're, we're, we're ready to dive in. And what I would usually say is you, you gave us a, a lot of really powerful negative thoughts. There were the ones I read earlier, there, that were seven that you gave us. And then you gave us a bunch more as we were talking, like, uh, why am I like this? I shouldn't be like this. I'm not doing a good job. This job is not for me. Maybe I should just quit. My friends are way better at, at, at this. I'm 36, eight and missing a lot. And all the, the, these others, um, which, which one would you like to focus on first? They're all 
just super. Um, Hmm. Um, doesn't matter. I mean, no, it doesn't. They're all good. So all right. just choose the one that you want to do um, first. If I do, so that the third one, maybe um on the yeah on page four if sure. i do not fix the client or make him her satisfied then he will judge me negatively and think poorly about me right uh, okay do you want to take over on this a little bit jill and do the distortions and stuff um i, I just want to make one quick teaching point before we do that i just want to bring people's attention to one quick thing um which is uh, people who are watching might be wondering, well, how, how are you just picking, you know, this one moment in time and doing this one daily mood log? And I think it's worth um, just highlighting to you all that, you know, Nasli is describing that this is a problem that happens a lot of the time, you know, kind of day in and day out, that she's hard on herself and feels awful when she doesn't quite know what to do in sessions with patients. Um, and actually, I just want people to sort of recognize that by, by narrowing in, by kind of honing in on one moment in time and getting all of these negative thoughts and feelings, in some ways, like, all of Nosley's distress around this issue is encapsulated in this one moment in time. And so if we actually could help Nosley with a whole bunch of her negative thoughts and feelings related to like kind of this moment in time, we'll be blowing open kind of the whole system, right? Because she, just like me and you and the rest of us, is very consistent in the way that she beats herself up, right? The way she beats herself up on Tuesday is similar to the way she beats herself up on Saturday. So we don't have to be vague. We can be really specific and really narrow and help her with kind of this set of thoughts and feelings. And then the, the methods and the techniques that she uses and the change that occurs kind of at this moment in time will generalize to kind of all other moments in times when she's being self-critical because it's kind of the same old thing kind of day after day. I love um, what you're saying. And what we call this is a fractal. This is called fractal psychotherapy. A fractal is a little tiny unit in, in nature that repeats itself over and over. And that's how nature works. That's how trees make leaves, how how forests de develop. It's the repetition of a simple little formula. And this thought, uh, Nesley said since first grade, that the, the, the specific words would change, but it's always, I'm going to be judged be because I'm not, not good enough. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, and so that's why we're doing this. Well, you're doing great, uh, Nesley, and uh, you, you, you come across in such a warm and likable way. I just want to pass that along. Oh, thank you. Yep. So, so are yeah, you ready so to are you ready to rock and roll? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you want to start us off on this thought, uh, Jill? Sure. Um, so everyone is on page four in their handout packet looking at the daily mood log and Nosley said, and, and we do often ask patients, which thought would you like to start with? You know, which thought is really distressing to you, right? And it doesn't really matter which one they start with because they're all, you know, equally, they're all problematic, right? And they all could use some fixing. Uh, but Nosley said she wants to work on number three. If I do not fix the client or make him or her satisfied, then they will judge me negatively and think poorly about me. And so Nasli, um, often the first method that we'll use is called identify the distortions. And this mm -hmm. is kind of the idea, as we said, that about kind of cognitive therapy, that our negative thoughts are tend to be kind of cons, right? They're not all, all correct. And there's oftentimes distortions we can find in our negative thoughts. And so I know you looked at this ahead of time, but I'm just going to ask you and the rest of the group to turn to the second page of the Daily Mood Log, right? That's page five. And look at the distortions on the bottom of the page and just kind of, you know, look through this list and then tell us when you look at this thought, if I do not fix the client or make her satisfied, they'll judge me and think poorly about me. What distortions do you see in this thought? And tell us why. Um, there's all or nothing thinking. Okay, and why is this an example of all or nothing thinking? Um, 
Because, Love that, by the way. That's the first one I put down, Nosley also. Uh-huh. Um, it's like black and white. If I don't do something good for the patients, then he or she will totally um, think that I'm bad. Yeah, exactly. So, that's, uh, yes, so it's that's all what's... black and white. It's You're either good or you're bad. You're either adequate or inadequate. Beautiful. So, yeah, and I, I have a lot of that. Um, That's the perfectionism, by the way. Yeah, unfortunately. What else? Do you see any other distortions in the spot? Um... I think you told us on this daily mood log you were done fortune telling, and um, I, that totally makes sense to me. But I'd love to hear you explain why is this thought fortune telling? Um, because I don't know hundred percent if maybe they will not think negatively of me. I don't know, but I always look at things from the um negative side and so i try to read people's mind oh for sure. do you get any data do you use the brief mood survey or the evaluation of therapy session with your patients no i have you might want to start doing then you yeah. you have a lot yeah. of a lot of data do you get have any feedback on how your patients do feel about you um no i mean i've asked a couple of times but not many times, maybe because I was scared. Oh, I see. So that this will be another <laughs> new technique for you to start finding out from every yeah. patient at every session. It will be a huge uh, transformation of your clinical practice. And yeah. then uh, join a couple of our groups and uh, learn learn some uh, you know some new te techniques as well. I think it'd be great great fun for you. But that's the fortune telling. Yeah. Um, then I'll do. Uh, with this negative thing, maybe magnification, um, magnification and minimization. Um, I mean, in terms of if then, like, I tend to maybe exaggerate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell us Good more call. about that. Yeah. What do you mean? Um, it's kind of like I maybe catastrophize, and mm -hmm. that's. That's a type of magnification, isn't it? Sure. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. So it's like I'm on the verge of being judged and blown blown away at every moment. That this is very dangerous. Right, right. I do a lot of catastrophizing as well. Mm -hmm. what, are, uh, what are some more distortions in that thought? Um, should statements. I love that. Tell us why it's a should statement. Uh, uh, because there is if I do not like we, we can we uh, rephrase it as I must. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a should statement in there that something like I must make the client satisfied yeah. or something terrible will happen. Right. 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 Definitely. It is a should statement. That's right. And I should be perfect and I should try to be perfect. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. What are some more distortions? You, you wrote oh. down metal filtering. Mm. Um mental filtering well that's that's um mm -hmm. because maybe first of all what does it mean to fix a patient that's one thing mm -hmm. um, sure the other thing is that um I, I discard the positive sides. 
Tell us about discounting the positive. Uh, Very important, what you just said. If I do not fix the client means that maybe, maybe I'm doing some good as well. Oh, uh, totally, not totally bad things or not only a negative or inadequate thing, but there might be some good in it, but I discard it and I, and I only concentrate on the negative side. And that's also part of perfectionism, right? It's all or nothing thinking. Right. So could you put that in the right hand column? I, I may be, uh, I might actually be helping this patient. Is that what you just said? Yeah, I, I may, I might, um, maybe, uh, I might be even maybe tiny bit helpful. I might be a tiny bit helpful. Yeah, even a tiny bit, maybe even like sitting there and giving my time. Yeah. 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 I might be a t- I might be a tiny bit helpful, and I'm I'm, I'm giving my time. Mm-hmm. When you Is- say Nasli, when you say discounting the positive, um, that's insisting that your positive qualities don't count. So, what are you not? What what is not counting? Right? Like I'm asking you, how is it that you're discounting the positive? What are some of the positives? I mean, regarding this statement. Yeah. What are some this specific negative thought? Oh, sorry. I meant like when you're with patients, you're beating yourself up and saying, if I don't fix the patient, then they'll judge me negatively. You're you're uh, saying this patient, you know, feels poorly about me. And so you're saying that I'm discounting the positives, like some of the good things that I might be doing. So I was asking, what are those? Um, well, I in myself, I try to do my best. Mm hmm. Um, I try to spend as much time as with them and actually I'm approaching them with a good intention. Mm -hmm. Um, um, yeah, those are the good things. And maybe like, we don't know that, I guess that's why, um, asking, a review of the and a feedback of the uh, patient, a, a feedback on the therapy session and the therapies is very important, as Dr. Burns you say, because I don't know, like maybe in the patient's point of view, I I was beneficial mm-hmm. in some way. Mm-hmm. So, or are you are you adding mind reading then to this uh, distortion? Right. I am M- MR. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Mind reading. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you're saying the patient may uh, may appreciate. Maybe he or she may appreciate, and maybe when we think that we're doing or we did a great job, maybe the patient may not be satisfied we cannot mind read so as you said that's why at at each session it's important to take uh, the patient's feedback yeah absolutely absolutely um should we see what we can do jill with a double standard or externalization of voices or something like that Yeah, I think that would be great. Just to make a quick teaching point for everybody, um, if you're wondering kind of why we hung out with with distortion so long, we do this, we don't actually teach our patients about cognitive distortions. We don't say, I think it's fortune telling, I think it's mental filter, take a look. We say, hey, look at this list of cognitive distortions. I want you to see which distortions do you see in your negative thoughts, which Nosley did a great job of. And then we ask them to explain the distortions to us. So we don't say, you see, you're being 
being perfectionistic, you are discounting the positive. We say, oh yeah, you are discounting the positive. How does that work? Tell me about that. Because in asking Nosley to explain these distortions to us, we kind of already have her sort of challenging and changing her negative thoughts, right? She's saying, oh, well, I actually don't really know what mage patients think about me. And oh, actually I do have some positive qualities. So just in using this one method, explain the distortions, we have Nosley starting to sort of like untwist some of her negative thinking. And again, you notice we're not doing it for her. We're not, you know, using Socratic questioning. We're, we're actually just allowing Nosley to figure this out for herself. Now I have a question for you, Nosley. <clears throat> Would you like to, us to use a, an, an aggressive technique in challenging this thought or a gentle technique? Hmm. That's a very tough question. Maybe we should start with a gentle one. Okay, sure. Um, a, a gentle one is the double standard technique. And you're telling yourself when you're with patients, if I don't fix uh, the, the client or, 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 or make him or her satisfied, uh, he or she will judge me negatively. He or she will think poorly about me. What would you say to another therapist who was just like you, who was uh, with, with, with patients? Uh, uh, would you say would you say that to, to them, or let's say a, a student was coming to you for uh, supervision? Would would you say that to to a student who who was an awful lot like Nosley? Would you say that to the student? Um, I would say, listen, my friend. Um, first of all, we're not like. What does it mean to fix someone? Secondly. Doing your best is already, uh, trying to do your best is already a good thing um, and is more than enough. Um, you're just like being too perfectionist and, and you're just being cruel with yourself. Okay, now I have a question for you. I wrote this down. I don't, you probably didn't have time to, when you listen to the video later, you can write it down, but I'll read it to you uh, right now. And, and, and I want you to tell me how true this is between zero and 100%, okay? You, yeah. you said, listen, what, what does it mean to, to, to fix someone? That was the first statement. How, how true is that between zero and a hundred? It's a question, so it's kind of hard to write, but there is a statement behind it. How, how, how true is it that we're not in the business of fixing people? Um, 70%? Se 70%. Um, let's go on to the next thing you said. Trying to do your best is, is more than enough. How, how, how much do you believe that? 80 that, that that's 80 you're, you're being too perfectionistic uh, and uh and cruel oh and cruel yes and, and cruel how, how 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 much do you believe that hundreds uh, a hundred um how could we uh, make trying to do your best is more than enough how could we change that to get it from 80 to 100 In other words, we want it to be completely true, right? We don't want you to be BSing yourself, right? So you said that's only like 80% true. So what, what could we say that would kind of encapsulate that meaning, but like be completely true? Mm. I have a suggestion if it doesn't pop into your brain right away. Please. Okay. Uh, tr trying your best is more than enough. and And if you start using the uh the brief mood survey and and an evaluation of a therapy session um uh, uh, you, you'll get uh, some valuable information that you can use to improve your clinical skills that's right that's i believe in that a hundred percent okay a hundred percent 
Um, and um, and Jill, can we edit the one? What does it mean to to fix someone? Or yeah, I think we should get. I don't I don't like questions because they're either true or not true. They're just questions. So if we turn that into a statement, what are you really trying to say? You said, listen, listen, my friend. You know, um, what does it really mean to fix someone? So what are you trying to say there, Nasley? Um. Turn that into a statement rather than a question. Um, I must be help. I must. I must uh, help the patient heal, and I have to do it at every session. Okay, so now if you were, that's your negative thought. Is I must. That's my negative patient. thought. Yeah. yeah. So if I'm your dear friend, um, and also, you know, I'm a, I'm a therapist, that's just like you struggling with the same thing. And I'm saying, Nasliya, I, I have to help every, I have to, what is it, fix or cure every patient at every session. You know, what, what is it that you were offering to me, that your more compassionate response to that? I, I'm a bad therapist um, because oh, I didn't fix being, this patient. Yeah, you're, you're being so harsh on yourself. And you have very high standards and they're not realistic because therapy is not that, how to say, um, is not engineering. And even engineering has um, uh, a standard deviation thing problem. <laughs> Can't be yeah. accurate 100%. So I think you're being too harsh on yourself. How much do you believe that therapy is not engineering and even engineering has variations? 100%. 100%, great. So now we have three statements that are 100%. Let me tell you what they are. Yeah. Um, you're, you're telling me that um, uh, trying, to, trying to do my best is more than enough. And, and if I start using the evaluation therapy session and brief mood survey, I'll, I'll get wonderful data that, that I can use to improve. And you're also telling, you're, you're telling me that I'm being too perfectionistic and cruel on myself and that therapy is not engineering and even engineering isn't perfect and ha has variations. Is that what you're telling me? Exactly, yeah. And is that true, or are you just being nice to me and blowing smoke in my face? No, it is true, because I want to get better. <laughs> okay, so what you're telling to me is, is very true. So now how, how true is this thought that, uh, that, uh, that I have to fix this client in the, today's session and make him or her satisfied, otherwise he'll judge me negatively and will think poorly about me. How true is that now? Now it lost his power. Mm -hmm. How much power does it have now on a zero to a hundred? Uh, 10 to 20. I mean, oh, okay. he or she can. But yeah, so right. Hard. Well, there's, there is a little truth in it now. Uh, so that was a mass. Oh, wait, wait David, you just I got cannot muted. Hear you. Somehow oh. you just got muted for a sec. Mm, okay. Not sure how that happened. Let's just take a sec. Huh. I, I still can't hear David. It's going to be something to do with his microphone because it. Can you like hear me cool. now? Oh, there, there we go. go. Yeah, yeah, there. Yeah, I must have bumped it with my arm. The button here. Yeah, the, the, your belief went down to ten per, per, to twenty, which is is great because there's a little truth in that statement, so we don't have to reduce it to zero. Now, c uh, can we go to a, an aggressive technique now, Nosley? Yes. I think I'm ready. Okay. What What is your name, Nosley? My name? Yeah, what is it? What is can your I, name? Wait, can, can I actually set it up so the audience knows what you're doing? Otherwise... No, I'd rather set it up. Okay. And then, and then you can explain it. Okay. okay. okay you what, mean the meaning of my name? No, no. Well, that that would be neat to know too, but I can look that up on the internet. But uh, just what is your name? Nasla. Okay. And what is my name? David. 
No. Nosley. No, it's David. No, I'm going to become Nosley too. I'm going to be the negative Nosley in this next technique. I'm going to become your negative voice. Oh, okay. Okay. And you're going to be your positive voice. Okay. So we're going doing a role play. Yeah, that's right. And we're going to do battle and I'm going to try to hit you with your negative thought. And I want you to see if you can defeat me with the positive thought. Oh, wow. Now I feel I'm in a performance. Uh, oh, right. Yes. This is a big performance anxiety. <laughs> now, do you want to start out as the negative Nosley or the positive Nosley? I will start with the negative Nosley. It's more, it's easier. You want to be the negative? Yeah, I want to be the negative. Okay. Well, say, say that negative thought to me using the second person you, and then I'll respond okay. with the first person I. Nosley, if you don't fix the client or make him more satisfied, then he will judge you negatively and think poorly about you. And then will tell you to the to your boss and you will get fired and no one will offer you a job in Istanbul because they know that you're such a bad psychologist. Yeah. Well, do you remember what the Buddha said 2,500 years ago? What did he say? You're full of shit. <laughs> what you're saying is just a lot of bullshit because I'm doing my best for this patient. And I think the patient probably appreciates my efforts. And if I start using the brief mood survey and the evaluation therapy session, I'll get some actual feedback for, from my patients that I can use to improve. But listening to what you tell me, you're, you're just trying to make me try to be perfect and, and saying cruel things to me. Cut, cut, cut it out. Therapy isn't engineering. And even engineering has, has variations. Uh, I've never been fired f f from my job, but of course, there's always room for improvement, and that's why I'm here today. But the first improvement I'm going to make is to stop listening to your constant BS beating me down when I'm without patients. You've been doing this to me ever since I was in the first grade. Cut it out. Well, who so gave just, you, who gave let, you let just, the just, just, Let's just stop, stop for a second, okay? Okay. Okay, who won that exchange? I'm sorry? Who won? Well, you won. And how big or small? What do you mean how big or small? Well, was it a big victory or a little victory? It was a big victory. Was it a big victory or a huge victory? It was a huge victory. I was smashed. Yeah, I'm yeah. Smashed. Right, that's the idea. <laughs> and how did I smash you? Um... First of all, you believed in what you said. Right. And that's one thing. Um, you were very confident. And you showed me the other way around. Right. And and you didn't take it. Right. Right. In mm -hmm. yourself. I did three things actually. One, I defended myself. Mm -hmm. And said, that's not really true. Yeah. I also use self-acceptance. I'm saying there's always room for improvement. And I have a lot to learn. There's changes I can and should make to improve my clinical skills and practice. And then the third thing I use is called the CAT or counterattack technique. I told mm -hmm. my negative voice to stop bullying me. I pointed out what, what, what was going on instead of just taking it as, as I've been doing since I've been in in first grade. Now, do you want to give that a try? I will try. This is something that I'm, my mind is not used to, but no, I'm that's, to it's, yeah, that's, this is new. Uh, you know, new. Uh, do you <laughs> want Jill to be the negative? Some new things. Do you want Jill to be the negative self or do you want David to be the negative uh, Nosley? Who do you want to attack you with your negative thought? Oh, you're asking me? Sorry. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Okay, let's let, let Jill attack you and see if you can okay. see if you can defeat her. Okay, yeah. You know, Nasley, if you don't fix your patients, all of them, and make them totally satisfied, they're gonna judge you, think poorly about you, and even report you to your boss, and you're gonna get fired. 
By the way, who who is this person talking to you in Osley? Um, who am I? Negative side. Yeah, that's right. That's okay. right. Right. So okay. I'm I'm going to be negative Nosley, and you're going to be positive Nosley, right? Okay. Or maybe realistic Nosley. Rational, exactly. I I prefer rational. Rational, Nosley. right? Exactly. Um, rational Nosley. Um. Well, this is um this is complete BS. Your role um is. I know that all your life, actually, you kind of had to protect me. You To protect me, you use this negative side, but actually, you're not helping me right now. Um, well, patients may think poorly or greatly about me. I can never know that. But if what you were saying was true, then... I should have fired um, before, but I'm getting only good feedback um, most of the time. So yeah, I guess that's <laughs> okay. Are you done? Yeah, I'm done. Okay. So, Nazli, who won that exchange? Was it you? You were rational, Nazli, or me, negative, Nazli? Um, I think negative one. Okay. You thought that I won? I don't know. Like, I believed what I said. Mm -hmm. Definitely. But I don't know if I was... Uh, I said it in a very firm and confident manner. Sometimes okay. if you bring in a little of the self-acceptance along with the self-defense, it becomes paradoxically stronger. Hmm, okay, okay. Uh, and, I'm getting it. Uh, but but you, you did the cat very well, and you did self-defense very well. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, hit, hit, hit Jill with the negative thought. Well, and let me just explain that, though. So you said this is complete BS. All of your life, you were doing this to protect me, but it's not helping me right now. That's that counterattack, the kind of like, I don't need to listen to you, right? And, yeah, and I think you did yeah. do that well. And then you said patients may think poorly of me or think greatly of me, but if it were true that I was going to get fired, then that would have happened before, right? I've been doing this for a long time, but in fact, I'm getting good feedback most of the time. And that was all sort of self-defense, like kind of, this is not true. And right. what David is saying with self-acceptance is that maybe there's a little bit of like this piece that David was including around like, Sure. Do I, am I perfect in every situation? No. Do I have room to grow? Could I improve? If I use measurement, could I maybe learn something and, and develop some more skills? Sure. And so maybe that's the piece that was missing, you know, but, but needing to learn and grow doesn't make me a crappy therapist or mean that I'm at risk of getting fired. Right. Yeah. So yeah, go ahead and why don't you hit me with it? I'll give it a shot. And then I want to do a role reversal again and give you a chance to see if you can get a big win. Okay, okay. Hi. So I start. Yeah. Um, listen, if you don't fix the client or make him more satisfied, then he will judge you negatively and he will think poorly about you. And then um, you'll you will get, get fired. fired. Yeah, you know, I really, I don't think this is true. I think this is just this kind of like bullying voice that um, that I have in my head all the time that's just always trying to hurt me and push me down and, and probably make me work harder, you know, and protect me from, from failure. But it's really not working for me anymore. And I don't think it's true at all. Um, I think I actually do a really good job with most of my patients. I get good feedback from my supervisors. I've been doing this for a while and no one's ever fired me or even given me a negative review. Um, at the same time, of course, there are times where I struggle in sessions with patients. Of course, there are times where I don't fix every patient. And I, I think I do have room to learn and grow. Um, I could use measurement, I could take some more empathy trainings, but that doesn't mean I'm a bad therapist or that I'm failing or at risk of, of being fired. It just means I'm a 
you know, hardworking, uh, conscientious therapist who has room to grow. So who won that, you or me? You. And was that big or small? It was big. And big or huge? Huge. Okay, so let's do a role reversal without wasting okay. any time. Let's see if you can take what worked from that, right? Okay. And, and use your voice and see if you can dish it back to me. So remember, Nosley, if you don't fix the client and make them satisfied, they're going to judge you. They're going to think poorly about you. They're going to report you and you're going to get fired. Um, listen, it's again, you're attacking me as you've been doing all my life. Um, but what you're saying is not very accurate or objective. Um, it is very normal that I cannot satisfy anyone and I'm not Aaron Beck or David Burns. So it's very normal. Um, that I'm I'm in a learning process and I will not be helpful to anyone, but I I I I'll help some people as well. Um so um uh, I will Mm. So that's why it's a good idea to give a review to the patient. So and there is room, so there could be some room, some accurate room for improvements. Um again, like if you were true, I would have been fired from every of my job. So um go back to your place and leave me alone. Okay, great. And, and, and who won that, Nosley? I think I won. Okay, and was that big or small? Um, what do you think? Well, what, what, how did it feel? I mean, I think you did a great job, but how did it feel to you? It felt big. It didn't feel huge. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, what you said was something along the lines of you're attacking me, but it's really not accurate or objective. And um, it's normal to not satisfy every patient. It's, um, you said something, I'm not Aaron Beck or David Burns. And so it's normal. I'm still learning, but I do help a lot of people. Um, and it's a good idea to give the review, the measures to my patients so I can you know, learn more and, um, and there's, there's always room for improvement, but, but you don't have to criticize me, you know, leave me alone. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. What do you, what do you think is missing if it feels big, but not huge? Maybe some stronger, um, evidence. It's funny. I was thinking the same. That was the word that was going to pop in my head too, which you didn't mention. You kind of mentioned it in the beginning when we were empathizing, but is, is it true that you get kind of regular performance reviews and that you actually get positive feedback from supervisors or from patients, or do you have evidence that suggests that you're doing a good job by some of your patients yeah. or colleagues? Uh, yeah. My supervisors and, and some of my patients and sometimes they they bring me or their families bring me like small gifts like they that can be you know from an well, they they gift. do that probably because they're mad at you because <laughs> you're failing them <laughs> yeah because you know like I encourage them a lot for occupational thing doing occupational things during their chemo when they stay home and then a couple of them like wrote me as gifts of what they the things they did handmade stuff oh things that they make when they're like you're encouraging them to sort of be you know to to do things with their time and then sometimes they're creating things and then giving them to you yeah 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 so david i don't know do we do we want to give nosley another shot at it using some evidence or do we want to move it, it, it's up to you. Thought. I thought your response was very strong, Nosley, but it's what you think that's that's very important. So let's try try one more really uh, quick role reversal and see if we can get you up to huge. You want to attack me or do you want me to attack you? 
Um, I think we need to give Nasli another shot because if you attack David, we're still going to need to do a role reversal, right? Nasli yeah, that's end, right. That's right. Has to end with Nasli. Okay, you're, right? you're ready. Uh, who who remember, am I? Remember to use your evidence this time, Nasli. Okay. Who am I? So you will attack me. Yeah, so who, who am I? What's my role? What's my name? You're the negative Nosley. That's right. That's right. And I, I just want to tell you, I know that you were bullshitting with Jill Levitt, and she's trying to make you feel better. But let's face the truth. If you don't fix this client or make him or her satisfied, then this client will judge you negatively and think poorly about you. And that's a fact, and you can't deny it. Um, listen, um, I'm not bullshitting. You're the one who is bullshitting. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, some people will think negatively about me and I may not be, I may not be helpful with everybody, but, um, first of all, I didn't get fired from my previous jobs. And second, um, I've had a lot of good feedback. Well, sometimes I've been having a negative feedback from patients, but the positive ones, um, what's the word, um, are larger, much larger than the negative ones. So it means that at least I'm doing some things good. Um, so... Please stop bothering me this much. And um, because your role is just to demotivate me and make me feel bad, and you're not right. You're not. Wait, who won? Who won? Who won? I think I won. Big or small? Big. Big or huge? Um. Between big and huge. Okay, do hit hit me with it. Be be the negative and hit me with it. Okay. Listen, um, come on, like you've been doing this job for a long time, but if you don't fix the client or make him satisfied, then he will judge you negatively, and he will, and then will think poorly about you and you will get fired because you're not adequate and you're incompetent. No, so no, that's, that's such horseshit. Just, just shut up. I don't even want to hear the rest of your BS, but it is true. If I don't do a good job with this client, he or she will be disappointed. And I'm going to start using the rating scale so I can find out my clients are the ones that know, and now I'm going to get their feedback and, and find out. But on the whole, I've done a pretty good work in the future. I'm going to do even way better work because I'm going to have new data available. And so I'm excited uh, f for the future. The only time I'm not excited is when I listen to your horse shit. And you've been beating up on me since I've been in first grade. C cut it out. I'm doing pretty good in my career. I've never been fired or close to being fired. But, but, I, but I do screw up in one important area. I have a, one, one huge uh, weakness. What is that? Listening to your bullshit. Shut up. <laughs> so who won? You won. Big huge. or small? Huge. How did I win huge? You really believed it and you all, you sounded super confident. Right. But I also used a lot of acceptance. You did, yeah. Uh, you know, that there's plenty of room for, for improvement. And, mm -hmm. and I also accept the fact that there's some truth in this. If, if I don't do a good job for a client, they will be disappointed. And now I'm going to find out when, that, when that's happening. Mm -hmm. But it's not my clients who are disappointed in me. It's my negative self. self. So, so um, uh, could I talk to you for a minute? Sure. I know Burns is trying to fool you and Jill is trying to fool you, but you know the facts is that if, if, if you don't do a great job for this client and fix them, they're, 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 they're going to think poorly of you. And that's just a fact. You can't get away from it, Ashley. Um, well, in this matter, you may be right. Some clients, for sure, they will speak poorly of me. Um, 
even I become the best therapist in the world, there will be people who will speak poorly about me. But um, there are a lot of people who will also speak and who have spoken positively about me as well. Actually, hearing these people speaking poorly will help me for to improve myself. It's not a good thing. Um, but what, what is the problem here is not myself or my competency, but it's you. You are the one who try. Um, you actually make me the biggest um, harm by constantly criticizing me since first grade and you're not helping me. Um, and I'm not believing you anymore. I mean, there might be some truth in wh what you say, but they're not, they don't mean that I'm invaluable or incompetent. One. What are you feeling right now? I really believe what I said. Yeah. Does that make you emotional right now? A little bit, yeah. Are you, are you feeling a little tearful? What are, what are you feeling? No, I'm not feeling tearful, but I just... It's the first time that I really, really believed it. Yeah. But I need to tell these time these kinds of things more to myself so that they become more automatic and overcome the negative side. Yeah. True. Um, it, my favorite part of what you said, Nosley, that really did seem just so totally believable is when you said my problem is not myself or my competency, but basically my negative thoughts, right? Yeah. It's not that I'm not good enough or competent enough. It's just that I keep listening to the noise, you know? Um, yeah. And I do, I think what you're saying is true. It's, it, it sounds like it's the first time that you really believe it and that you can say it so emphatically. And it is going to take practice. I mean, yeah. um, it's sort of like opening the door, right? To a new way of talking to yourself and a new way of thinking. And of course, the old way is going to be loud and convincing. And so you are going to need to work hard to like practice this new kind of compassionate and rational way of thinking. Yeah. Oh, I, just take, way, I was going to say, could I take one more second and see if you can do this with a different, with another thought? Cause you did so great on that. Sure. The only thing I would like to mention, you asked me about my emotion. Um, I think I felt a little bit of grief yeah, right. Yeah. Can you tell us about that? Um, because of having lived with yeah. this voice for 20 years. Right. More than 20, 30 years or whatever. Yeah, that's that that's really sad. Mm -hmm. That that what 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 you've been missing, it's been sucking the juice, uh, you know, sucking the joy out, out of you. That, that That's very sad because you have so much potential and so much to offer and because you're offering so much. And maybe after today's workshop, you'll use some tools that will open things up fantastically mm -hmm. for you. But it's just, it's sad um, that, that you, you've been ro robbing yourself. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Kind of the tender, tender side of, mm -hmm. of, of the, of the self-love. Self yeah. Love. Um, David, you were going to try a neg another negative thought? Yeah. Just, just see if you can do it, do it again. You want to see if you can do it again? Sure. Uh, could I talk to you for a minute, Nosley? Yeah, please. Uh, You've been talking all my life. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I just want to remind you that, that that you'll probably make a mistake and harm this patient, and that, that will mean that you're bad, and, and you should never make a mistake. 
You listen to me. Don't you make a mistake. Listen, um, because of this fear that is embedded in me since a very long time, because of you, I've been missing a lot in life. Making a mistake, I may make, I make, I can make mistakes. Anyone can make mistakes and I will make mistakes, but that does not make me a valuable person. The point here is, um, is to learn from these mistakes and to use them as a growth potential. Um, and making mistakes does not always suggest harming people. I think the problem here is harming someone with, with the intention of harming that person. Even, I mean, harming someone through a mistake, an un unintentional mistake is sad, is very sad. But that, that does not make you invaluable or less valuable than other people. It is just a very sad thing. But sometimes bad things without our control happen in life. And that's normal. That's life. And um, probably I've been so frightening in my life of making a mistake. Probably because I experienced something or I witnessed something. But this is too much. I mean, you're not helping me anymore. You're just torturing me. And you've been tortured me all my life. So, um, and, you're, and your role has, well, your only role was to, okay, maybe you try to protect me in some ways, but also you're not useful anymore. Um, so please go back to your, wherever you're coming and do not bother me anymore. Great. Who won? I won. Big or small? I think big. Big or huge? Huge. Huge. Great. Now let's just, uh, go to, uh, I thought you did beautifully on that and it's fun to see the new self emerging. Go to page four and let's look at the percent after column. And let's start out with uh, anxiety. How much anxiety are you feeling right at this moment? Um, I mean, we in general, you mean, or um, regarding the first negative thought? What if I miss psychopathology or make a wrong diagnosis? I don't know how to answer that. Can you answer that, Jill? I guess we're just, uh, yeah, we're talking about about the, this problem, right? How, how anxious are you feeling right now? In general, you mean? <laughs> okay, sure. Um, you know what? I don't feel anxious right now. I, maybe zero to five. Okay, put zero to five in the percent after column. This is, uh, you know, at the top. This is not uh, with the thought. This is at the top. Yeah, the the emotion table at the at the right, top right. there. Uh, like where you you had a, 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 it was eighty. Your goal was twenty, and it's come down to zero to five. How yeah. bad and ashamed are you feeling right now? Five. Put a five there. Yeah. How inferior and incompetent and worthless are you feeling? Five. Five. How uh, sad and unhappy are you feeling right now? Um, how, zero? Zero, nice. How? No, you know what? I feel sad, but I, it's not. Healthy sad. Bad, it's not depressed sad. Yeah. Right, it's joyous sad. Yeah, it is grief sad. Yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. You know uh -huh. what, yeah. That's right, that's a beautiful sad. How embarrassed and humiliated and self-conscious are you feeling right now? Um, uh, zero. Zero. And how hopeless and pessimistic are you feeling? Uh, zero. Zero. And how uh, angry, resentful, and upset are you feeling? Um, re resentful, does that, let me Google it. Um, well, just forget it. Just talk about angry and upset. Okay. 
I don't feel angry or upset. Put another zero there. Now, zero, yeah. you've, you've exceeded all of your goals. And I have two questions, yeah. and then we'll see where we go in terms of getting audience questions or whatever. But um, are these changes real, or are you just being nice to the old fart? No, they are real. But you know what? When they became really real is with the last practice we made. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, and I didn't expect it. Uh -huh. I was kind of hopeless a little bit. <laughs> and, yeah. um, and the interesting thing is that it resolved, but it brought with it this interesting um, grief and sadness. Yeah, I often have the term sadness as celebration. Uh -huh. There's a healthy sadness that brings us uh, closer to our spirituality, and there, there's a, a very beautiful aspect of that of that sadness. And I'm just so happy that you're sad in that way yeah. and that's uh, that's the way to grow i felt it yeah and it's so, you know what is so interesting is that emotion actually i'm feeling and it's very real yeah i'm not playing yeah because it's you love feeling, it's feeling um sadness around like just realizing how uh harsh you've been with yourself and how much you've been kind of hurting yourself and, and, and those kinds of feelings. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. It makes so much sense. It's like you, you're ridding this huge burden and huge weight, but in ridding yourself of it, you're just realizing just how much it's cost you and how much it's hurt you. And, and they seem so real. Yeah. I was so fused with them. They were so part of me. Those negative thoughts. Yeah. 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 So, Jill, I, I, I don't have I, the schedule in front of me, but would this be a time for some Q and A before yeah, the so, lunch break? Well, I was just going to say one thing quickly, and then, well, actually, the way we have it scheduled was like uh, fifteen minutes of Q and A, and then, or maybe ten at this point, and then we were going to set up the uh, breakout group practice and then have them practice. So we were doing lunch break at uh, 1230 after giving them a half hour to actually practice the invitation. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we still have a little ways to go. But um, the only other thing, Nasli, I wanted to say, and then let's let's leave about 10 minutes for Q&A, and then we'll just do a quick setup and have you guys practice and then we'll take lunch at 12 30 but nasley i was gonna say you know this is like i said i think it's sort of opened the door to some good change i think from a homework perspective what i would ask you to do is um we will share the recording of the session with you and so listen to the recording for sure write down the positive thoughts or the rational thoughts that you came up with and then i would also like to ask you to then go through the same exercise with the remainder of these thoughts it's really important that when you kind of have the momentum of these believable rational thoughts that you continue forward so if we had another hour we would just keep going and we would have you crush all of these negative thoughts, or if I were seeing you weekly next session, that's what we would be doing. So I would encourage you to keep this daily mood log and work on identifying the distortions and then really using the self-defense, the self-acceptance and the counterattack to crush the remainder of your negative thoughts. And Maybe one like last. setting a time every day or every two days. Yeah. Would be a good idea yeah. for it to really... Yes, because you made a you made the point that you've been telling yourself these things since you were in first grade, and so it's going to take some time and practice to right. kind of rewire things and and get it to stick. Basically, right? You see it right now. We just want you to see it every day. And I have one question, uh, Doctor Burns. Sure. After like these thoughts will pop up during the day, right? When I speak with. Yeah. other people but i will not have time to sit in my to sit down and do the crashing word that's why i will set time aside but when they come do you think that was like diffusion mindfulness exercise just naming the distortion well I, i'm an anti-mindfulness so i'm not the guy to ask okay. uh, but, but, okay. but what you can do there's a way you can do mindfulness in real life and it doesn't involve meditating, but you can, if you want, buy a golf counter like golfers wear on their wrist to keep track of their score. 
and oh. each do you know what i mean by golf you know they hit the golf ball yeah, 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 yeah. and yeah. then they they have a little clicker on their wrist and they click okay. it and this and the number goes up by one and you can oh. count them when they come into your brain you can even do it during therapy just every time you have this thought you you count it and okay. then let it go and it. and do what you're doing with with the patient and then at the end of the day you can put how many thoughts you had on your calendar and agree to do this for four weeks. And uh, most people they find in the third week, the number of thoughts suddenly uh, goes down and it goes all the way to zero. Because you don't give meaning and belief to that thought. Uh, no, but later on, you, you can it. challenge it on your daily mood log. Yeah. But at the time, you just click it, say, oh, there's that voice in my head again, uh -huh. and, okay. and just let go of it and then continue to work with, with, with your patient. Yeah. It's just okay. like now I get a pain in my hand uh -huh. and then I interact with you and all of a sudden that I, I'm not thinking about any pain in my hand. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. I get it. Thank you. Well, yeah. It's the same idea of mindful. It's just noticing it and then moving forward. Right. right? You say just like, oh, yep. Notice that. Notice. But like, yes, you're not going to do mental battle in the middle of your session, yeah. right? You're just going to go, oh, yeah. that's that. there's that pesky thought again, or there's the bully again. And then, you know, keep going. Yeah. That's what I meant with the mind, like the right. diffusion technique. Yes, or exactly. Say. Yeah. I think it's the same, different language for the same process, which is the right. kind of like noticing it and then keep going. Exactly. Yeah. I used yeah. to have these thoughts myself all the time in therapy sessions, uh, Nosley, too, especially oh. when I was start, starting out. And now when I have a thought like that, I, that I'm, I'm not good enough, I say, well, I am not good enough, but my patients have such low standards that they don't even notice. So just get on with the session and have some fun. And that seems to work out really well. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, May I ask a very uh, quick mm -hmm. question? Yeah. Um, you're a psychiatrist, Dr. Burns. Mm -hmm. so you were trained in medical school. And as you know, some mood disorders are very biological. Mm -hmm. some like unipolar depression or the depression of bipolar disorder. And does these cognitive techniques, like thinking style, do they, can you apply them to those type of like depress, depression or mood disorders? Well, I started out doing full-time brain research and I won awards for my research on brain chemistry. Yeah. And our research showed that that theory was a false theory. It's not true that oh, okay. depression is due to a chemical imbalance in the brain. It's due to neg negative thoughts. Now, there are some disorders like schizophrenia that that's, it's not due to a chemical imbalance, but it's due to some kind of brain damage. And we don't uh -huh. know the cause of that. You can't cure that with cognitive therapy. Right. But I haven't prescribed a medication in over 30 years. Even for bipolar patients? No, when I had my practice, I had lots of bipolar patients and I, I gave them low dose lithium, okay. except when they got manic. And then for a few days, I'd raise their lithium and give them Thorazine or something so they didn't have to go in the hospital. Uh -huh. Okay. But they did great. Once I learned cognitive therapy, I used to run the lithium clinic at the VA hospital in Philadelphia, and we had all bipolar patients. And we had one of the top three psychopharmacology teams in the world. Uh -huh. And I never uh, had a single patient who did well, not even one. They just went in and out of the hospital constantly. The, the, oh, the, the medications alone didn't, didn't do much. And then once I learned cognitive therapy and started doing that, uh, that then I, in the next uh, 20 years, I only had one patient that ever had to be hospitalized for, for bipolar. And that was just one episode. He'd been hospitalized 17 times before he came to me and just had one last hospitalization and then not again. So wow. the, the, the cognitive therapy was extremely important for bipolar patients because most of them, like yourself, were perfectionistic and thinking they had to be great to be worthwhile and learning unconditional self-esteem and humility and, and just humble self-love was, was very liberating for, for them. Okay. So okay. let me, let me just, uh, yeah. And, and so to be clear, the answer is regarding bipolar disorder. Yes. Meds have a role. There's no question. 
Um, but, but so does cognitive therapy, right? Okay. And just to be clear that I heard David saying that in the midst of all of this is yes, bipolar is different. And schizophrenia may need right. medications during a good, good part of it as well. Right. But people with regular depression and anxiety, I, I don't, I don't use medication. Now I've developed a new app that most patients uh, recover in one day with, with our new feeling good app. So that, that's another thing as well that may be new in the treatment of depression. So the mm -hmm. only thing, just to clarify for you guys, so basic technically, according to our day plan, we're done with Q&A, but obviously we didn't start Q&A. So we do need to give, give a few minutes for people to ask questions specifically about the demonstration. Um, so right. let's, we're going to move to that. We're, we're supposed to be sending people to breakout groups to practice the invitation at noon and then at 1230 have lunch. So, but as we segue to Q and A, Kevin is going to read a few questions to us, David. Um, but I just want to say, Nasli, like a huge heartfelt thank you to you for sharing so openly and vulnerably with all of us. I think your story was very relatable, and I hope that the session um, has a really big impact on you. That you continue to take this work and and use it, you know, daily um, on yourself. And I suspect that other people who are are watching um, are feeling much the same way. Yeah, thank you, Nosley. You're so oh. likable and so fantastic. Please stay in <laughs> yeah. touch and let us know once you start using the feedback forms and maybe doing some of the basic training. It's just going to be fun to see you go into, into orbit. Okay. Well, I would like to thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. And it was a really, um, it's, it's been, as I shared with you, it's been a great um session for me thanks it, it, it really changed a lot in me that's great to hear hello Rhonda. i think i forgot to say that at the beginning, that at the beginning of the podcast <laughs> <laughs> that's why i said it's your turn but what i wanted to say was i love how your your goal for your patients like you said at the beginning of the introduction to this podcast your goal is is not just the alleviation of of their suffering or their symptoms, but for them to reach enlightenment. I love that. Yeah. And uh, that's a lot different from when I was a psychiatric resident. The goal was just the patient would come in, they would talk, the symptoms never seemed to change and the process dragged on and on. And I, I really think that what probably everybody wants is, is not only to get over when you're depressed, to get over your depression, but it's not just to feel undepressed, but to, to have a sense of joy that when you say it's great to be alive, wow, it's really fun what I'm doing today and, and having some, some gratitude. And that's where the assessment devices that I described that we talked about in, in the beginning of the, the first podcast are, are so important because you can see how, how much the person changes. And, and, and as, as you heard in this podcast, Nosley blew her negative thoughts in, entirely out of the water. And uh, she was just feeling a sense of joy at the end. And then after that, you want to do your, your relapse prevention training. And then if the patient has something else that they want to work on, like maybe a relationship problem or a panic attacks or a habit or addiction, you can always budget more time to achieve some other goal. But I think once you've shown someone, you can make their depression disappear and give them the tools to do it on their own. Uh, you, you've accomplished something pretty, pretty fantastic that can really be a change somebody's life. And that's that's the that's the goal, really. Yeah. What a beautiful goal. You you were making another really cool comment earlier about uh, some. Well, I was just noticing in this in this part of the podcast, you and Jill talked to Nosley about. Why you, you why when you're working with the patient with the brief mood survey, I'm sorry, with the daily mood log, why you pick only one moment in time? And you were talking to her and Jill was talking to her about how all of the issues that one experiences are encapsulated in one moment of time. And can you talk about that just a little bit more? Yeah, it it it's it's so it's so true because when I was a resident, we were just told to have the purchase talk about whatever they want. They talk about the, this childhood event or this thing that they're upset about or that thing. They were always moving from thing to thing. It seemed like they're. I, they, I used to have this thing I called the blizzard of depression, where people everything in their life is so negative and it's just very overwhelming. 
and uh, the patient is overwhelmed, the therapist gets overwhelmed, and you kind of throw up your hands and start to feel hopeless along with your patient. And then in Team CBT, we, I focus the patient on just one brief moment. I say the most I could help you with, it, it, it would be like a, say, five-second moment of your life. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I can help you, if you'd allow me to help you for that five seconds uh, and, and help you overcome what was going on, your whole life will change in that moment. And you'll see the solution to all of your problems. And that's because the key to our suffering uh, will always be the same thing, whether you were a little girl or a little boy and something upsetting happened or wh- whatever, or you were embarrassed in class and you felt foolish and, and you started to say, I'm, I'm a screw up, I shouldn't be so shy, I'm not cool enough. Then every time in your life when you get upset, it'll be that same pattern repeating itself over and over again. That's called a fractal. And that's how nature uh, is constructed of fractals that re- repeat themselves like a leaf. A tree is a little tiny formula that repeats itself over and over and over again. Then there's a form of mathematics called, I think, Mandel. Brook sets or something like that, fractal mathematics that studies the, the these patterns. But that's what we're doing in team. We we find your fractal uh, by just it just comes out very quickly. It's the pattern of distortions and and beliefs that you have at any moment when you're upset. And for the rest of your life, whenever you're upset, it'll just be that same pattern repeating itself. And so we can quickly, with the daily mood log and writing down your the event, your feelings, and your negative thoughts, we can figure out in a matter of minutes what, what your fractal is. And then if we do team therapy, we can usually find a solution, find the way to overcome that fractal in a single extended uh, therapy session. And then after that, it just practice doing that over and over again, strengthening those positive circuits that will blow this fractal out of the water every time it tries to reassert itself. Mm. Thank you. That's great. That's really helpful. Because one of the things you had said to Nosley is that people are consistent in the way they beat themselves up. So like if they make a decision when they're 13 and some mistake happens, like I'm always a I'm always a person who makes this type of mistake. Then when they're 23, they're going to have that same thought because yeah. they're going to be consistent in the way yeah. they have beat themselves up. Yeah. And that's then there's an advantage to the therapist if you know how to tap into that because you can re- highlight that pattern. You don't need to talk about their childhood and spend hours and months and years, uh, you know, talking about your life. You, we, we can get you there in 20 minutes, really. And it's the same with relationship problems, although that fractal will be different. The fractal that gets you, the, the, that little tiny part of your brain that gets you into relationship problems will always be radically different from the part of your brain that gets you into depression or anxiety. But regardless, you, you, you can uh, pinpoint it quickly using the interpersonal therapy uh team therapy that i that i've developed using the relationship journal and uh yeah so anyway thank you everybody thank you Rhonda. thank you nosley thank you jill and thank you for listening (laughs) (laughs) thank all of you you're our santa claus yeah this listening every 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 week and we're, we sure appreciate it this has been another episode of the feeling good podcast for more information visit dr burns website at feelinggood.com where you will find the show notes under the podcast page you will also find archives of previous episodes and many resources for therapists and non-therapists We welcome your comments and questions. If you want to support the show, please share the podcast with people who might benefit from it. You could also go to iTunes and leave a five-star rating. I am your host, Rhonda Borowski, the director of the Feeling Great Therapy Center. We hope you enjoyed this episode. I invite you to join us next time for another episode of the Feeling Good Podcast.